good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I've noticed that an old video of mine has started to get a few more views and it's a very old one. It was before I knew even the basics of how to edit a video and I was also learning as I went. So I didn't know as much information and I couldn't kind of express it as clearly as I can now. So I'm going to remake that video very quickly just to give people an idea of what a dividend is how, and most importantly, how it affects the stock price of a company. Because a lot of people in the beginning, including myself, would think that it's just kind of free money when you receive a dividend from a company. So I've heard this example, I'm going to use BP. It's an energy company based in the UK. And the important thing here in the beginning is to clarify exactly what a dividend is. The easiest way to put it is it's just spare cash that a company has that it doesn't have anything better to do with. And I know that sounds strange, but that's exactly what it is. A company can decide whether or not to pay a dividend. So when they decide that they are going to pay one, it's because they don't have a project or a product or anything else to put that money into. The company feels that the best thing they can do with that money is to give it back to the shareholders. And it incentivizes people to hold on to the stock rather than just sell it off. But a dividend is quite literally just spare cash that the company has that it doesn't have a better use for. So it's up to the company whether or not they pay a dividend and they can start paying them or stop paying them whenever they want. The next two very important terms are the ex-dividend date and the declaration date. And it's important to know that they're not the same thing. The declaration date is the date that the dividend is declared. It's when BP says that we're gonna pay X amount per share on this date. So I'll show you an example first. This website I'm using here is called Dividend Max. It's very, very handy. So I suggest that you use it if you're a dividend investor. A lot of very handy information. If I scroll down a little bit, I can show you exactly what I'm talking about at the moment. So if you've never seen this before, it can seem quite daunting, you know, and it's very easy to mix up what all of these different titles mean. I've done it myself very many times. But I'll explain what a few of them mean so that you'll have the tools to understand this. And regardless of the website that you use, it will be the same terms used over and over again. So we'll use this top row. This is for BP. So here we have the declaration date. Now this date here, the 5th of November of 2027, is when they plan on announcing to all the shareholders how much they're going to pay per share and when they're going to pay it. Over here, we have the ex-dividend date. Now it's very important to know the difference between these two. The declaration date is when BP is going to give us the information on the upcoming dividend but the ex-dividend date is the deadline that you have to have held your shares before if you want to get the next dividend payment. Now, the only reason I say before is because if you were to buy it on the 17th of February, 2028, you're cutting it a little bit close. I would buy it on the 16th of February, but this ex-dividend date is the deadline of when you have to have held the shares by if you want to receive the dividend, which will be paid on the 31st of March, 2028. So the deadline is the 17th of Feb. The payment date is the 31st of March. Here we have the declared currency. That's just for this particular stock. You can usually find different currencies for each company, like obviously depending on the company, but although it is a UK based company, you can have a version of it on the stock market that pays in US dollars, which is the one I'm looking at now. The forecast amount is how much it's expected that they will pay. Now, I'm honestly not 100% sure if it's the company's forecast or analyst forecast. I'd assume it's the company's and based on previous history. But this is just what they're planning on paying. It's what they said they will pay. Obviously, if circumstances change, they won't. But the declared amount is per share. So if I scroll down a little bit, we can see... 7.27 cents per share. So if you have 100 shares, you can multiply this by 100, and that's a rough estimate of what you can expect from BP on the payment date. So back into the portfolio, this is the BP stock that I hold. The ticker symbol of it is just BP, and it's in British pounds. Now down at the bottom, 
we can see in the fundamentals, we see the market cap. That is the value of BP as decided by the stock market. So when a company becomes publicly traded, it means that the public, the stock market, is deciding how much the company is worth. So in order to understand how paying a dividend will affect this market cap, it will affect the value of the company, we need to know exactly how many shares of BP are available for anybody to buy or to own. On a quick Google search will show us that the number of outstanding shares as of right now, September 2023, is about 3 billion shares. So that is all of the shares in existence, and that's for insiders, people in BP to hold, and outsiders, so retail investors, institutions, basically everybody else. Now, if BP pays, let's say, one pound per share on whatever date, that means that they will be giving away nearly three billion pounds of their value out to shareholders. So if they are worth 90 billion pounds and they pay three billion pounds out to everybody, the value of the company will drop by three billion pounds. So it's not free money that appears out of nowhere. It's cash from the company's value. But if you hold stock in BP, you will notice this drop on the X dividend date, on the deadline date is when this drop will happen. So they don't really create money out of nowhere. It comes out of the value of their company. 